Thank you, Kahirlik, uh, and uh, quite a fantastic debate we've had. Everybody that spoke here today has a great grasp anyway on what the domestic violence means uh, to families around this country. And uh, we all know that domestic violence wreaks havoc in families on a daily basis in Ireland, and, but it often slips off the political agenda. And it is without a doubt a, a silent crime and, and a taboo subject. And uh, a lot of time people don't want to speak about it. Uh, just a few things. You mentioned funding and um, how we have made, the funding has been made available. Minister, I would urge you to go back to Cabinet, I know you're not at the Cabinet table, but to take it back to Minister Shatter, that, that there really isn't adequate funding. And whatever he does, whatever about uh, going back to the 2013, for, please try and retain it at least without a cut this year, because it's going to end up back in your lap anyway, because it's going to go back to the Hill Board and the local authority when, when people have nowhere to go. For example, Minister, in Kildare, there is a new refuge centre waiting to be opened, but the doors have not opened. They have, they have everything in place, but no funding. And, and uh, last year, or possibly last year and, the, and a bit of this year, uh, a, a 66 adults and 138 children have been sent away because the doors are not open. So that's an example of where the funding is short. And from a study carried out uh, of women who entered refuges, uh, women's top priority needs were staying safe, information support and housing, making decisions about their life, healing emotionally and understanding the impact of domestic violence. That's coming from the women themselves now. But unfortunately there are very little stats on domestic violence and again I say that's because it's not a crime in our statute books and because on many occasions on the doors of the courthouse, on the steps of the court, the solicitors reach agreement and often the perpetrator will say to his victim, you know I love you. And that is the key if the weakness they turn around then. They don't want to take their partner to court. They don't want to highlight all over the paper. They want change. They want their partner to change and go back to what it was. They did love them. They did go living with them. And they want to go back to that. Um, now, there is more than just one way of encountering um, domestic violence, and one is psychological. And can you imagine every day of the year being told, you're stupid, you're tick, you're worthless, nobody would want you? Imagine how that would affect one mentally, and uh, how it would destroy confidence. A broken arm, broken ribs, broken bones, they will heal eventually, black eye will heal up. But uh, a psychological abuse can last a lifetime. And I know one woman, I'll be very brief because I know time is running out, who, who has 20 euro a month to live on. 20 euro a month because it's a little pension she has, but not one penny from her husband. She has to do everything with that, get her hair done, uh, she has to buy her clothes, um, her toiletries and things. But she's lost so many friends because she cannot go out uh, for a cup of coffee. She cannot go out to an event or to a, whatever, a concert room because she doesn't have the money. And she's actually ending up a prisoner in her own home her own home. As I've already said earlier in my contribution, I believe the whole system needs a good overhaul in relation to domestic violence and indeed sexual violence. It is not good enough that a, per uh, a perpetrator of a sexual assault can be given a slap on the back of the hand and told to pay a fine and go home. That's not good enough. As a woman, I take this as an insult as I'm sure many of the women in here do because no woman goes into court uh, and, and, and has to give graphic details of the sexual assault in her for money. They don't do that. They go to court for justice. They go to court to ensure that that perpetrator will never offend again and will never commit that crime on another victim. So it's not about the money. So that, that, that's something we've got to deal with and deal with now. Uh, tra traditionally, the state and religious organizations have left women and children down. Same physiotomy, ma the Magdalen laundries, women and children as they were then, um, you know, sex to child sexual abuse. Time after time, we've left women and children down. And now we must, we must not let this issue go on the back burner. We must s step up to the plate, we step up to the mark and make changes in our judicial system but we need it now. And I don't want to be back here again, well I won't be here, but maybe in 30 or 40 years apologising to people because we didn't act. Now is the time, we've seen what's happened over the years. During my research in this motion, and I'll finish on this, I spoke with many of the organisations who assist women and who are service providers, and I thank them for their help and cooperation. In particular, I thank Safe Ireland, who are represented here today, 
and Women's Aid who give me a lot of help, advice and uh, information. And what I want to say is that Safe Ireland has done a lot of work on this, years and years of work. Weeks have gone into by me, but this organisation has years of work put in. And pretty soon they will be presenting to an Oireachtas committee their findings and their proposals to overhaul the whole system. So I would just ask that we would all wait until we find out, see their proposals and their, um, their uh, findings. And if we agree with them at that stage, row in behind them and, and ensure that their proposals are brought to fruition. So I want to thank all the senators across the House today who, who supported this motion and who contributed to, to this debate. And I just think that it has been dealt with sensitively and uh, with the integrity it deserves. And I want to thank the Minister for coming in to take the debate. I trust you will take all the sentiments of the debate and from all uh, senators back to the Minister. And in particular, whatever we do, protect the funding because it's 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 a catch-22 if we don't give funding to, to, to these services it's going to end up back on the head on the lap of the health board or the local authority back on your lap minister so i i would finish with that and thank you again thank you for here